So moving on to uh, our lectures on uh, heat, cold, and electrical injuries. And there will be uh, three lectures. In the, in the first lecture, i.e. in this lecture, we are going to study the injuries due to heat, excessive heat, things like burns, scars, etc. And then coming lectures, we are going to discuss frostbite and uh, things like that. But uh, uh, the global picture that I want you to have in mind while we move on is that heat, cold, and electricity are some of the examples of physical agents that can cause injury. And uh, heat uh, can cause heat can be of two types of sources. It can be wet heat or it can be dry heat. Dry heat and uh, wet heat cause different patterns of injuries, which will uh, become clear as we move on. So moving on to next slide and see what we have there. Heat injury. Heat injury occurs when dissipation of heat is less than heat gain, i.e. the body is, has started to gain the heat. This is according to the laws of thermodynamics, uh, according to which our bodies are in equilibrium with the environment. So if in any case when the absorption of heat exceeds dissipation rate, then the burn injury will occur when the temperature rises, when the temperature rises high enough to disrupt cellular processes. And agents for providing heat and causing burn can be physical or chemical. Physical things such as hot water or hot iron rod, you can also add to the list flame. Is flame physical or chemical? Flame is physical. Flame is light, hot light. Uh, and the chemical, chemical includes things, uh, things such as bleach or corrosive acids, etc. And as we previously mentioned, the sources of heat may be dry or wet. Where the heat is dry, the resultant injury is called a burn. Whereas the moist heat, moist heat for example from boiling water or hot oil, this is this causes a different pattern of energy, a different pattern of injury which is known as scalding. So now we move on to um, discuss the pathophysiology of the injury that are caused due to heat. Heat energy pathophysiology. Tissue, tissues exposed to burns or scar trauma uh, when the tissue is exposed to heat energy Heat is a form of energy, so when the tissue is exposed to it, the tissue elicits an inflammatory response. Inflammation always occurs in two things. Number one, infection, and number second, number two, tissue necrosis. So when the heat energy is beyond the beyond a certain limit, the tissue starts eliciting inflammatory response, and the inflammatory response causes increased permeability. So there may be blisters or vesicles formation. What is blisters? Blisters go uh, Urdu mein chala kehte So blisters are chali. And uh, since the skin covering is lost, so the fluid underlying the skin in the uh, vascular spaces and in the interstitial spaces will come in contact with the environment and starts evaporating. So when the tissue starts evaporating, there will be fluid loss and severe dehydration. With the loss of fluid, the concentration of electrolytes in the body fluids will increase. So there will be electrolyte imbalance and the loss of fluid can eventually cause hypovolemic shock which is a thing of quiet concern in the burn centers and uh, we also know that the skin is an important part of our innate immune system along with other things such as mucosa acidity of the stomach the acidity of the skin etc so skin is a part of innate immune system with the loss of skin the uh, victim or the individual becomes susceptible to different infections and uh, the last point which I underlined because it is the most important point not conceptually but from paper point of view because um, this relates to a past paper MCQ. So you should bear in mind that heat is one of the agents that can cause protein denaturation and the proteins the most uh, of our proteins in the body are present in the muscles. So denaturation of the muscles can uh, cause specific signs and uh, we will discuss these signs as we move on. Uh, that is an MCQ that we will see later in the slides. So moving on, uh, broadly classifying the thermal injuries, thermal injuries can be due to cold or they can be due to heat. So I want you to skip this half of the slide for now and focus on this half and because this, this is the uh, topic of this lecture, moving on to a clean version of this slide, heat, um, when the body is exposed to heat, there can be some generalized effect, i.e. the effects to which the whole body is uh, exposed. This can cause effects such as heat cramps, heat exhaustion, heat stroke. We have all heard terms like that, especially occurring in the Sindh region of Pakistan. So, uh, but that is not a concern. That is not the where that is not where the money lies in terms of forensic pathology, because the examiners don't want you to know these things, uh, because they are the they are major concerns of 
ICUs and uh, medical wards, not forensic departments. Forensic department is most concerned with the local effects, the burns and scars. So we will discuss burns and scars in detail. And uh, these are mentioned briefly in most of the books and you can go through them uh, if you want. But uh, that is uh, unimportant and beyond the scope of the purpose of this series of lectures. Because here we focus only and only on high yield stuff. So moving on. Burns versus scars. What is a burn? We have previously mentioned that heat source can be dry or heat source can be wet or moist. When the heat source is dry, this will cause injury known as burn. And when the heat source is moist, i.e. boiling water or for example hot oil, this will cause a specific pattern of injury called scars. The major distinguishing point between the burns and scars uh, from medical legal point of view is that burns will cause blackening of skin. This blackening of skin as visible here or here. This blackening of skin is called charring. Charring is a term used for charcoal-like appearance, i.e. the skin is burned to charcoal-like appearance. And another term used uh, instead of charring sometimes is uh, something called scorching. Both are same terms. These mean blackening of skin, uh, which is unlikely in case of scars. Here is an illustration of scars. And uh, scars are characterized by reddening, erythema, extensive erythema. And these things will become clear as we move on to um, as we go through the text in the next slides. So burns or these scars, burns can be flame burns and burns can be due to article. Um, burns, as we previously mentioned, occur due to uh, dry heat when the source of heat is dry. So what are flame burns when the tissue come in contact with the flame? It's simple when the tissue flame burn means when the tissue comes in contact with the flame. This is called flame burn. Sometimes the contact with flame is for short duration. So burning is only superficial and as the duration of contact with the flame increases, deeper tissues become involved. This is known as flame burns. And what are article burns? Uh, article burns, article means anything hot, any weapon, any object like for example, um, hot iron. Iron here meaning istri or hot piece of some metal. Um, so when the body comes in contact with any hot particle, any hot article, object or weapon, this may leave imprint on the body and the imprint may show the shape of the weapon or the object used and the degree of severity of burns in this case also, as, also depends on the duration of contact and the hotness of the object used. So these are, uh, there is not much rocket science in there, therefore I haven't uh, bothered to mention them in detail. So simple is that. Flame burns are due to when the body is, comes in contact with the flame and article burns uh, occur when the body comes in contact with certain hot object and the, the severity of burning in both of these cases depends on two things. Number one, the duration of contact. And number two, the hotness or temperature. So these are just uh, a little bit uh, overview of the burns and now we move on to scars. What are scars? The general features of scars are similar to those of burns with erythema, i.e. reddening and blistering. But charring of the skin is only found when the liquid is extremely hot, such as molten metal. So charring is unlikely. The pictures we previously saw, I think it won't, help, uh, it won't uh, bother us much to recall a little bit. So we move on to the previous slides here. You see there is no blackening of skin because charring or scorching or this blackening is unlikely to occur in the scars. That's what I have mentioned here. Sorry. The general effects of scar are similar to burns with erythema and blistering, but charring is only found when the liquid is extremely hot, such as molten metal. Do you find molten metal in your household these days? Maybe if you were in medieval times and designing some medieval weapons like swords or axes, things like that, then you might have exposure to molten metals. But in modern times, there are uh, no molten metals. I mean, uh, there are still in industrial processes, etc. But uh, and a uh, common exposure so charring is unlikely to be seen in scars. So moving on to the next slide, and uh, there the specific the, the second pattern or second characteristic of uh, scars it something called splashing. What is splashing? Splashing is cheating. In Urdu, we say katre. As a pani phenke kisi cheez pe aur us central yani ki agar yahan pe pani phenke to iske saath saath yahan pe chote chote drops jo gir jate hain. Splashes, 
ये इसका पैटर्न भी ये पैटर्न भी स्कार्स में देखा जाता है सो सीइंग व्हाट वी हैव इन टेक्स्ट हियर स्प्लैश्ड और स्कैटर्ड ड्रॉपलेट्स ऑफ लिक्विड रिजल्ट इन स्कैटर्ड एरियाज ऑफ स्कार्डिंग एंड दिस द लिक्विड द वेट हीट और द मॉइस्ट सोर्स ऑफ हीट फॉर एग्जांपल बॉइलिंग वाटर इफ पोर्ड ऑन सम बॉडी विल ट्रैवल अंडर द इफेक्ट ऑफ अंडर द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ ग्रेविटी सो हियर इज अ ब्यूटीफुल इलस्ट्रेशन ऑफ दिस यू सी द वाटर वाज पोर्ड ऑन द शोल्डर ऑफ दिस विक्टिम बट दिस वाटर kind of flow down dribble down due to the influence of gravity and this helps us to determine the orientation or position of the victim at the time of this uh, occurrence of scar so going through the text once more splashed or scattered droplets of liquid result in scattered areas of scalding runs or dribbles or drops of hot fluid will leave characteristic areas of scalding these runs or dribbles will generally flow under the influence of gravity they flow like this and this provides a marker to the orientation or position of the victim at the time of fluid was moving so um, what what are the two major differences between the burns and scars the first one is absence of charring or blackening in the scar the second one is splashing pattern now moving on and seeing what we have there uh, so that was all about the differences between the scars and burns and now we come to the classification of burns the burns can be classified uh, on two bases burns can be classified on the basis of severity and they can also be classified on the um, on the basis of the extension of uh, burning or the total body surface that is affected t for total b for body surface s affected so there are uh, two broad categories of classification of burns in this slide we are going to discuss the first one so before going through the text uh, i think uh, it will help you a lot if you focus on the texture here first so moving on to a clean version of this slide the first um, first degree burn and the second degree burn sorry the first degree burn the second degree burn and the third degree burn they are um, they specify the different severities of the burns in the first degree burn there uh, there is just superficial burning there is no loss of epidermis and in the second degree burn there is full loss of epidermis you see this is epidermis this so when this is lost due to burning this is called second degree burn and when the epidermis the dermis and even some part of uh, muscle and exposure of bone occurs this is known as third degree burns there are also further classification of burns like fourth degree fifth degree sixth degree burns which um, uh, which kind of illustrate or which describe the uh, even more severe burns so moving through the text the first degree burn is uh, simple erythema and blistering there can be vesiculation blistering and vesiculation are interchangeable terms they simply mean chale and in the second degree burn there is a loss of full thickness of epidermis and exposure of dermis in the third degree burn is a destruction down to subdermal tissue and there can be exposure to muscle and bone so how can you remember this i have uh, seen in different books like in simpsons uh, there was a uh, different explanation of these degrees in amir selim there is different um, there is kind of a little change in detail of these degrees and gautam biswas explains it in different way so uh, it's unlikely to appear in the past papers and it's most more of a road memorization thing rather than some conceptual thing and i haven't seen it appear in the past paper mcqs anyhow so but still i think uh, it will uh, do no harm if you um, uh, remembered it and put it in a cell anywhere in your hippocampus the way i remember the first degree second degree and third degree is this third has t in it and thickness has t in it so in the third degree there is full loss of thickness there is not a particle of skin left and there is exposure to bone and muscle how and how do i remember the first degree the first degree bends all of us have encountered while ironing clothes or uh, maybe frying chips or things like that so the first degree burn is a very superficial burn and there is just a theme so the burn that you experienced in your life was first degree burn and the burn the third degree burn has t in it the thickness the word thickness has also the letter t in it so the full uh, thickness the loss of full thickness of skin is the third degree burn and in between two comes the second degree burn this classification is known as dupuytren classification
Your partner was a little mathematical guy, so he liked the numerical classification. Therefore, he named things such as first degree, second degree, and third degree. There is another classification called Wilson classification of the severity of burns. Wilson, Wilson classified the burns as epidermal burns, um, in which the burns in which the epidermis was lost. He called those burns epidermal burns, the burns in which um, part of dermis and full epidermis was lost. He named them dermo epidermal uh, burns and the, the burns in which the full thickness of skin was lost he named them deep burns so there are uh, three uh, further classifications of um, sorry there are uh, three sub degrees in the wilson classification the first one is epidermal burns the second is dermo epidermal and the third one is deep burns but i have, haven't bothered mention the wilson classification yeah, because um, this whole slide is kind of low yield and uh, uh, less concept and more memorization and i haven't seen anything appear regarding it in the past paper mcqs so it's unlikely to appear for you um, for the best